Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining today. I am going to just turn off my camera. I hate to see myself talk and I will share my screen with you. Just one moment. You should be seeing that now. So reference solutions, if you've used our database in, in the past, you may remember that we were under a different name at that time, Reference USA. It's the same great database. We've just rebranded. In fact, we did so probably September, October timeframe of last year. And we made just a few changes on this homepage. We pulled our webinars out and made them front and center. They used to be under our learning center. So we've uh, made that more available or accessible to patrons. You probably perhaps noticed we do offer an app. So if you would like to be able to use that, you could download that on your uh, phone or your, your tablet and have access to two modules. That would be the US Business and the US Consumer Lifestyles. And then of course, we do give you the ability, you know, with the feedback from our library partners of which we depend on their insights because they're hearing it firsthand from, from the, their library patrons, we were told that not in every case did people necessarily need to be able to download information, but some might rather be able to simply save that. So that's when we created this personal account. It's not a shortcut by, by any chance to get to the database. You still have to log in through the library's website. But once you're here and after you've registered, you can log in and you can save any of the searches that you would like to do with the majority of these modules. The only one that you can't uh, save information is the US jobs and internships. With this one, you're able to email yourself results, but you're just not able to save them in that personal account. And I would also point out, I'll get back here to the top, under the Learning Center, there might be some uh, use for, and I'll show you where that's at. Of course, we have our contact information all over the place in here. You'll notice that, but we, we do have some training materials that you might want to utilize. So if you want to open this up, on this far right hand side, we have these database overviews. We have one for all the business related databases. So the US business, the US new business, the healthcare, one for all the consumers, one for all the modules, and then a breakdown of each of those modules. So know that you could use any of that information. We also have this data dictionary for business and for the consumer modules. So if you had a question about a, a specific data element, you could get to that as well. Know that that's something that you could have up on another tab, or if you would rather print it off and have it available uh, for whenever you were going to do a search or use the database, you could certainly do that as well. It's up to you. Know that that's available. Of course, you could always contact the, the library and they can help you uh, through your search, or you can reach out to us as well. I'll go back to my dashboard my homepage here, you'll always know that you're in the database when you see the San Francisco Public Library's logo there. And there is on these nine various modules, there's an update schedule and slightly different across these. So with the US Business Database, this is the one that we came into business with, right? We started in 1972, put pretty much as a list marketing company. You know, businesses would call us and they'd say, hey, I need a list of all print manufacturers in the United States. And we would sell them that list and, and they would go about contacting those businesses. In roughly 1992-ish, uh, if you remember, uh, Vice President Al Gore invented the internet and we moved from a floppy disk into the universe of the internet and made this access available through public libraries at that point in time. So the, the US business database is still the one that gets the lion's share of attention. 
We call Verify businesses. And as you note here, there are some 62 million, about 60 million of those are, are verified records that we have called annually to make certain that they're still open, that we can still keep them verified and make that information available to you. And we're pushing out those updates in regards to the US business database every Thursday into Friday morning. So 52 times a year, this is being updated. The US historical information, technically it's being updated at the beginning of every new calendar year. The Canadian business information, this is being updated monthly. The jobs and internships, this is a relationship that we have with Indeed.com. And this information is being updated daily, sometimes it, multiple times a day. Just depends on what's going on with the job listings. And if you're not real familiar with Indeed, they are their own posting site, but then they also aggregate information from other sites like Monster or CareerLink, county posting sites, those types of locations. So we're updating this daily and really the difference between going directly through Indeed and coming through us is you not only learn about those jobs and those internships, but you'll also learn about the company that's doing the hiring. Our U.S. new business filings through the Secretary of State's office. We also get that from utility hookups, uh, phone hookups, that kind of information. We're updating this information every week. We'll keep it in here as a new business record, very raw in its, in its form. We'll keep that in there for a year because we do know that there are entities that want to be able to look at over the course of a year, how many business filings have been done in a particular area. So we'll certainly keep that in there for a year, but we're generally able to turn these biz, new, new business filings into a full business record within 30 to 60 days. So this is being updated weekly, our U.S. healthcare, this is being updated monthly, as is the consumer lifestyles and the Canadian white pages. Those are all monthly updates. Last but not least, the new movers, new homeowners. Great information, especially if you're a business and you rely on consumers uh, perhaps coming into your physical location or perhaps a, a phone call into your physical location uh, to, to transact some business, you can find those new movers, new homeowners in your area and that's being updated weekly. We're getting this through our license with the USPS National Change of Address and making that available weekly. So I'll certainly give you a good overview of how to use the database and how to use these various modules within the tools that I'll dis uh, disclose today are, are, are available in most of these modules. Certainly not every one of them will have each of these tools, but most do. If it's, if it's not there, it's not missing, it's not broken, uh, it's just not available. So I'll open the US business database first. And whenever I open any module, I'm always gonna to come to this quick search tab first. And in this case, you know, maybe I wanna look up just one company and get some information about that company. I could certainly do that. Maybe there was an executive that I had worked with at another company and I've learned recently that they've moved, but I'm not certain where they may have gone to. I could try that first name, last name. Hopefully you can narrow it to the city and state that they're in and then be able to get access to that information. I could even do a reverse phone number lookup if I wanted to. So know that uh, you can produce that kind of information and whenever you're going to view those results, it's always going to be about that particular, those verified records. We'll never show you unverified records whenever you're doing a quick search. It's only gonna be those that are verified. So if you didn't find that company and you thought, hmm, that's odd, you could always go to the advanced search and look for that company by name in that city and state and include the 
unverified records. Those are, those are records that had been verified at one point in time. And then when we went to do our annual phone call with them, we didn't reach them. We don't stop after one attempt. We'll continue trying to reach them a total of two dozen or a dozen times throughout the course of two years. And if we can't find any information that they've closed, we can't get them verified, we'll move them from that verified status into the unverified. And then of course, we also have closed businesses. But whenever I'm doing a quick search, it's always going to be about those businesses that are in fact uh, verified businesses. And let's do this. Let's do, I'm gonna do a, a search here for you. And we're just gonna do your community. So I'll grab San Francisco. There it is. California, there you are. And now I'm gonna look at those verified records. This will give me a total of all those businesses across your community of which there are uh, 72,000 plus. And it's one thing to, to, to know how many there are. I'm able to use this charts tool to then give it a breakdown by business type. So I'll select that. And notice it first gives me it by the SIC code. If you're not familiar with that, that's the standard industrial classification code. Every retail, every for-profit, every for nonprofit would have an SIC code. In fact, technically, Uncle Sam has retired these, but we have been using those codes so long, we've actually added additional digits to what was a four-digit code at greatest length, and we've made, in some cases, a nine-digit code to allow you to get very granular. So this is my top seven across your community. And in first position, as it is in most communities, Physicians and surgeons come in at that top spot because they're all 1099 guys and gals, right? They are their own individual businesses. Followed by, in this case, restaurants, then attorneys, dentists, real estate, nurse practitioners. And just like in my city of Omaha, Nebraska, you have automated tellers in this seventh position. And I like to point that out because we do have those kinds of records in our system, and if you wanted to exclude them, maybe you didn't want to, to waste time looking at automated teller records when you're not gonna call one, right? You're not gonna ask it for its business, right? So you could certainly omit those, and I'll show you how you could omit any type of business, not just automated tellers. We will also have kiosks in our records. So for example, like Redbox, We'll have those in the records as well, but I can omit anything. In this case, it's giving me those top seven. I can scroll down and get a full report. Notice this is 140 pages in length. It gives you the primary SIC code that they're under, that description, and how many records apply. And if I wanted to, maybe I wanted to get into this group of beauty salons because I have some product that I want to be able to sell them. I could hyperlink right into this group by selecting that number and it will open up that universe of 779, of 797 for me, excuse me. And I can get to that information. So know that's always available to you if you would like it. I'm gonna revise my search and I'm gonna go to advanced search. It's one thing to look at an entire community or maybe a single company or look for an executive. Advanced search allows me to do so many more, uh, feet using so many more features. And by the way, there are additional filters. It goes to the same place. It goes to advanced search. So all these filters that are on the left-hand side are available to you. And I do like to point out the difference that we saw with quick search with one company that I could look at. This would allow me to look up companies by name and I can do more than one. So if I wanted IBM, for example, I could add that to my list. 
if maybe I want Delta, I can add that to my list. I get to add as many businesses by name as I want, and then it's just a matter of selecting my geography. Otherwise, we will always give you the company name. We'll always give you this executive information where we can get that in our verification phone calls. We always ask, who's the owner or manager of that business? Or if it's of a, of a larger company, you know, who's that CEO or that uh, chief financial officer? We try and capture that information and make that available so that you can use that criteria to drive in your records. Maybe you need to only look at businesses that have an owner present. If that were the case, Certainly select that and then just drive in those records. Or maybe you would accept a manager if an owner weren't available. You could certainly drive in that management information as well. You may get both, but for sure one or the other, right? So that is always available to you. Type of business. It, it, you know, for us, it's always been about being able to deliver to the end user that kind of information that's most important to them. And again, type is, is one of those key filters that often gets used. As it notes here, you could put in restaurants and just see restaurants in an area or hospitals or dry cleaners or certain kinds of manufacturers you get to be the driver and you can do that with this keyword. Let me also point out, we have this major industry group, which is just the SIC codes. You may also be aware of or have heard of NAICS codes. So when Uncle Sam retired the SIC codes, the NAICS codes took its place. They came up with this coding system when the North American Trade Agreement was, was reached between us, Mexico and Canada. And they needed a system that all countries would use in order to identify those those products coming in or going out, right? So that's that was that's what's replaced the SIC codes. We have both. I would always encourage people to use the SIC codes simply because they're more granular. Geography kind of speaks for itself. I will show you this map-based search tool. Let's look at this major industry group though. This is always gonna be only SIC codes and you can look at it from the standpoint of those businesses that their primary line of business is X. Think about Walmart. Their primary line of business is a grocery, grocery store chain, right? But they have so many other lines of business under their umbrella. The, Certainly the, the garden center, which by the way, I've been to a lot this spring, uh, the pharmacy, the automotive, electronics, clothing, you name it. They have all of those other lines of business. If I wanted to look at those businesses that their primary line of business is something specific, I could certainly drive that in. Let me give you an example. Under construction, of course, there are these, these three codes, 15, 16, and 17. If you wanna know what that definition is, click the plus symbol and it will give you the definition for each of those codes. So if, if general contractors were important to you, you could click on that plus symbol and it takes you to this level of a four digit code. And that was the extent that Uncle Sam was using this coding system. We decided to add to that. And notice how much more granular it's become. In fact, I helped my niece who lives in Dallas. She had some water damage that occurred when, when Texas went in the deep freeze. And she wanted to be able to reach out to a contractor that this is their primary line of business. So you simply select that and then scroll down and select show me those that that's their primary line of business and as you can imagine any general contractor could say oh i do this kind of work i'll come in and i'll i'll, I'll cut up your sheetrock to about three feet and and i'll dry everything out real good for you make sure there's there's no problems there she really wanted somebody that this was their specialty so that's why we got to that level 
So no, you can stair step your way into information if you'd like to. Then for her, it was just a matter of putting in Dallas, Texas. Phone information speaks for itself. Number of employees. We do know that a lot of people want to use something to define a business by size. So certainly number of employees is one, as well as sales volume. This is that one of those questions that we're asking. How many employees do you have? About 72% of the businesses will give us an exact number. Those that don't, we look at their peers in the area. So based on the type of business they're in, we'll apply a range. If we can't get a, a response to that question, we'll apply a range. So know when you see that in the record, if it's an actual number, bingo, we got that in our call. If there's a range there, they did not respond to that question. And we learned a long time ago, you don't ask a privately owned business how much money they're making and not have that phone call perhaps end suddenly. So we have a team that puts together an algorithm that produces that modeled number for that sales volume. If it's a publicly traded company, then that sales volume is going to come from their 10K report. But if it's private, that will always be modeled information. And the same thing is true with the business expenditures. Some people want to be able to look at business expenditures, can certainly do that, but know that that's also modeled. Ownership, we give you lots of different ways to look at uh, businesses. I had a, an email because we uh, I showed you where our contact information is, took an, took an email request from a customer who wanted to identify jewelry stores uh, across the country that had at least uh, 10 or more locations somewhere in the country, right? Well, as it relates to actual numbers of locations uh, affixed to a business, I have that, but I don't have the ability to break that down by 10 or more. So what I instructed that person to do, I did some homework, of course, and I identified that type of business. And I simply was able to drive in this SIC code. I, I did some research and I found this SIC code in our records for jewelers retail. There it is. You can click on that, add that to the selected field, and then I simply went down. He didn't, I didn't need to change anything under geography because he wanted to look at the entire United States. That's easy. So I selected jewelers retail, and then I went, I came down here and I said, let's look at the headquarters branch. He didn't care if they were publicly traded or private. So at this point in time, I said, let's grab all of them with subsidiaries, right? So that means they're going to have a number of those uh, particular businesses under their umbrella. And as you'll note here, there are 36 across the United States. So that's only two pages of records. Real easy for that person to be able to go through and simply count up, and I would go under the corporate tree structure here and count up how many of those businesses had at least 10 or more locations. Wouldn't take him very long at all to be able to do that. So know that that is certainly something that can be done with the database. So you can use a lot of these different filters to get to the kind of information or get close to the kind of information that you need. I am going to do this type of search for you. Let's, well, let me do uh, point out, we do have home-based businesses. So if you wanted to see them or exclude them in an area, you could certainly do so. Maybe, maybe you want to look at businesses that have been, been open for a certain number of years. Maybe you want to see those newer businesses. You can tell the system, hey, show me the last 
three years of businesses that have opened in whatever geography you want. Perhaps you'd rather identify businesses that have been around for a while. If the high water mark for you were 12 years or older, you could certainly do it that way as well. You get to be the driver. Know that there's lots of different ways you can filter in or filter out pieces of information. And as it relates to professionals, all are one. We added this, much like we did with the, the uh, ability to create a personal account, we added this because we were told by our library partners that in some cases, patrons didn't necessarily uh, want to include every doctor or every attorney in a listing of businesses that they were going to look at in an area. Maybe they were planning on doing a mailer, but they didn't want to reach out to every attorney, just a primary attorney at that office. You could choose to go from all to one. It would reduce the number of records that you would ultimately receive. And if they were going to do a mailer, it would reduce the cost, uh, certainly associated with that mailer. So know that you can certainly include that if you would like as a filter. And then we have a lot of different ways that you can omit information. The, if I did not want ATM machines to show up in my, in my records, in my output, maybe I'm doing a search in a generic area and I don't want those ATMs to show up, I could search for that. The system will identify the SIC code that goes with automated camera machines and I simply click on it, add it to my selected field. And as long as I leave that active, I'll never have an ATM machine show up again. Maybe I don't want bars either, for example. I could, I could certainly search for that and, and exclude bars as well. It just depends on what I wanna be able to do. So no, you can exclude a lot of different information, including previously saved searches as it notes here. So maybe I wanted to look at across all of San Francisco County, but I wanted to exclude one city. I could do that. Just depends on how I'd like to do that. I'm gonna do a simple search. We're gonna do a keyword and we'll just look for restaurants. I need some, some numbers here. So I'm going to search for all restaurants. Notice that's what I'm set on here. Here's my all-inclusive for all restaurants. So that would be uh, those fine dining establishments as well as those small mom and pop uh, sorts of restaurants. Just depends on what I need. If you'll note, I mentioned how much granular we take this. Notice if you wanted to get to just steakhouses or just French restaurants, German restaurants, you can certainly do that. We added another digit to that. And once we got down to number nine, we turned it into an alpha. So went from six to that seven. We even, if you wanted to get to certain uh, chains, made that a nine digit number. So know that you can get that granular should you need to be able to do so. Then it's just a matter of driving in my, ge my geography. Where in the world do I wanna go? Uh, let's do this. Let's, let's select from, from the, we'll, we'll do the, the entire county. So I'll select San Francisco. And there's my California. Then it's just a matter of, I can either scroll down if I wanted to, or I can start to uh, key that in. In this case, I'll just select that. And so now I'm telling the system, show me all restaurants across the county. I have a total of 3,659. Now notice if I change this up from searching all to only primary, notice it drops it down to 3177. So it's gotten rid of those businesses like I mentioned Walmart. Uh, think about businesses that have perhaps a restaurant in them, but that's not their primary line of business. How about bowling out? 
you know, theirs is entertainment or bowling, whatever that would fall under, right? Uh, so it gets rid of those. Think about the convenience store that has a, a corner of their building or corner of their store with a few tables and they refer to that as their restaurant. All of those are being excluded since I'm asking the system to look at those by primary line of business. I can get into that list and let's chart this real quick. So notice, since I'm just looking at the one SIC code, it's not gonna give me a breakdown by that. It's going to give me the city, the zip codes, so I could switch this up if I wanted to get all of the zip codes across the area with those that have those numbers in each. And I get a full report of all those zip codes across your county. I can change this up to employment size. Maybe I wanna look at this from an employment size. I helped a lady do a, prepare some information like this for Orange County, Florida. And she would to be able to show this uh, listing to her employer so that her employer knew what she was in essence uh, going after as it related to, she wanted to look at it from an employment size standpoint as well as a sales volume standpoint. So all of this can be made uh, printed off or be made part of a PowerPoint presentation. Just depends on what you need. So you can certainly look at it that way. You're also able to put this information on a heat map. It's a density map. I have a feeling it's going to look quite dense across the county. Let's see because of those, all those locations, right? So it's applying those uh, 3,100 records across the county. And I have where it's red, there are lots of restaurants in those areas where it flushes more yellow, fewer, green even less. And of course, if there's no color, there are no restaurants in those areas. I can even change, as it notes here on this left-hand column, I can even change the zoom to on my map. And when I get to the point where it's 300 or fewer records, this is what it will do. I'll just drill in and I'm gonna kind of pull this up so I can get rid of some of those restaurants. So then it will pinpoint where those restaurants are at based on the view of the map. And it gives you this legend on the side. So if I wanted to know where this blue, blue plate was at, I could get, get right to it. And notice it does state that there's two locations closely, close to one another, and there's the other one. So it just depends on what you need to be able to do. All of this can be printed off or made part of a PowerPoint presentation. Right now, I'm just looking at this from a location standpoint. It could certainly be sales or, or number of employees. I can always go back. I have the ability to download this information. If you scroll down to the bottom here, it says how many downloads you can do at a time. So this would be 10 pages because it's... Uh, uh, 25 records per page. So with that said, I can come right up here and I can put a check mark in this box next to company name, grab all 25 records, and then it's just a matter of going to the 10th page, right? And at that point, I'm able to then do my, my download. There's my sixth page, seventh, eighth. And it always tell you how many records because you're, you're gonna wanna stop this yourself, right? If I keep going, I'm gonna get an error message because I've gone too far. I'm not allowed more than 250 at a time. So if that's the case and you want these records, then it's just a matter of selecting your download. Notice you could print. 
I do get this question. If I want to save the records, can I just save the ones that I put the check mark next to? That's not the way that save search is set up. The save search is going to save all of these records. Uh, and you can, like I mentioned, come back to those at any point in time. So here's my download. If you intend on making mailing labels because you want to send something out to these businesses, know that comma delimited is definitely what you want to use. This is mailing label friendly. Still drops it into a form of Excel. I do have the summary option here that it automatically defaults to. If the name of that business, their address, phone, it would include information like that owner or manager's name and title, the number of employees, sales volumes, line of business that they're in, all of that information would be captured in this download and presented to you just as it is here on this Excel document. The only thing I would add to this is my pages, this page that just came up is static. I can't add anything to it. If you would like and didn't want to save multiple groups multiple pages of 250 at a time. If you would like, you could open up your own version of Excel because your page isn't gonna be static and you could keep adding more and more records to it. If that's the case, I would just come up here with your mouse into this corner between cell one and A and simply click in there. It'll highlight this entire record, all of this stuff is ready to go, then it's just a matter of copying this and dropping it on your version of Excel. That way you could save one record for maybe 500 or 600 results that you wanna be able to download. It's up to you, right? So if that's the case, you could drop it on your own version of Excel, minimize yours, come back here, close mine, It'll always leave you on this instructional page. Then you simply select the word back. It leaves you on the page that you were last on, which is page 10 with those check marks. Now you need to clear out those check marks. Otherwise, you'll produce the same records. Easiest way to do that is revise search. It doesn't forget how you built your search. There's all those records. Then I can view my results again. It's left me on page one, all those check marks are gone. I need to start on page 11, hit enter, and, and there I'm ready to go with the next group of 10 pages. So you can do as many of those as you need to in groups of 250 at a time. And the same thing would be true when, when printing, uh, same process. Let me take this out and let me see. I'm going to cheat a little here and I'm just going to go back a couple of pages. I wanted to see if, nope, it's not going to be on that page. And I can't remember if you all have, oh, we'll use this one. So I have the Asian box here. I have an up arrow and, and this is my entire corporate tree. So if I wanted to, see who the uh, subsidiary is. And if there weren't a subsidiary, the ultimate parent, I could choose this up arrow and it's gonna show me one record. This will show me their entire organizational flow. So I'll select that. Notice it's part of FK Restaurants and Hospitality out of Palo Alto. I've got one subsidiary and eight branches. And there they are. If this were a larger group, if we were looking at, for example, Arby's, I, that's, that's one of the restaurants I like to use. They have 42 subsidiaries under their umbrella and some almost uh, 40,000 branches. So you can get to any of that data that you would like by selecting that option. And by the way, I'll just go back to that record. Let's open this record up. I can also get to that same corporate tree information from inside the record. 
So know that you have access to that insight either way. And in fact, this is a typical record, right? For, for any of our businesses. I've got that location information here. There, in this case, their website and a couple of the social links that they use, those job listings. And as you can see, I've got 19 days ago, 12 days ago, 30 plus five months ago. So it just depends on what it is that you're uh, interested in. I have that industry profile there. Now I won't necessarily have a business profile on every single business. I'll have that either on the subsidiary or the corporate parent. I have Google Maps embedded in here. So there's their location. And as you can see, I can change that up to satellite view. I can use the street view toggle, just depends on what I need. And this is a great example. So when we contacted them, they did not tell us how many employees they had. We last reached them in November of 20. So that's when we'll call them back again in 21. Unless, let's imagine for a moment, let's imagine that you know this general manager, Wendy, and the two of you were having a conversation. One day she mentioned that, that uh, they had actually 15 employees at this location. You can tell us about anything that needs to be updated about a record right here by using this data feedback button. And what that'll do is it tells you that it's going to go to this group of researchers and that based on the item or items that you put a check mark next to, we'll go ahead and research and get that updated. So if 15 were that number of employees, you can put a check mark there, wipe out that five to nine, put in that number 15, fill out this information, submit it to us, and we'll go about calling that business to get that insight verified. At which point in time, so you'll get two emails from us. You'll get a, an immediate response thanking you, thanking you for that information. And then within seven to 10 business days, you'll get another uh, response confirming the update of that business information. And when we call, let's say that we call and, and, and they say, no, we have 17 employees. Of course, we'll put in 17 and skip this 15 that you put in there just depends on what we learn in that phone call. So any record of ours can be updated uh, that easily. I can always get back to my original list. Let's do this. I'm gonna revise this slightly. And instead of looking at the entire county, I wanna show you another option and we'll go with the map based search tool but i'm going to just for the heck of it i'm going to add in a couple of employment ranges and i'll even throw in those businesses with web addresses so i'll grab uh these two and i'm going to say those companies with the web address and instead of using the county i'm going to remove that and let's just do the map-based search. And we'll start off. Let's open that up. And whenever using this tool, you'll always wanna drive in your filters first and then open this. Lori, what would be a zip code, either there at the library or anywhere in, in San Francisco? Oh, at the library, our zip code is 94102. 94102. Now, wait a second. Wasn't there a TV show called 904? No, that was. Uh, I'm going to say go. And it brings me right to that area in the zip centroid. And I have this map that I can use. With this, I have all these tools that I can employ. So I could draw my own shape if I wanted to. I could do a true radius. I have some predetermined boundaries like zip codes, et cetera. I could even create a drive route. So when using, for example, this uh, map tool, 
I could, I put in the zip code, but I could be putting in a physical address. Maybe I wanted to put in my business's physical address and then do a true radius around that address to find more, to find these businesses that I'm interested in seeing. I could certainly do that. I just wanted to use the zip code because it's kind of quick, right? And it gives me this view that I want to employ in drawing a shape. So let's say that, let's say that I want to start off here kind of at this Twin Peaks area, and I'm going to cut the Mission District kind of in half. So to start my search, it's a single click. Then to change direction, it's a single click. And then where do I want to go from there? Do I want to go further out this way? Where do I want to go? Let's say I want to come right up here and I want to go out here. And that's that's the shape that I want to draw. I can double click to finish it. And then the system has identified that there are 244 businesses that match my criteria that are in that shape. And as I'm looking at this, I'm going, you know what? I don't, I don't like the way I drew that shape. I really meant to, to do something a little different. I could either delete this and start all over, or maybe I want to, maybe I just want to cut out this area. I can trace that line, bring it right back there, double click to finish it. There are 23 results of this 240 that are in this area. If I want to double click there and exclude that, I could do so. And those 23 results will be deleted from that 240. And as you can see, I've got that 217 ready to go. So all you have to do is say done and then view your results and you'd get those, in this case, restaurants. So I want to show you a couple of these other tools though. I'm gonna delete these guys. I'm gonna go for a radius. Again, with a radius, how far out do I want to go? So if this were truly my starting point, maybe this was the address I put in. I can start from there and pull that out. So it's a click, hold it and drag it away. And I can go in any direction, right? I, I get to be the driver here. I don't wanna cause anybody uh, a vision problem by doing that too much. But as you can see, I'm already out to just about two miles there. If that's what I wanted, I can say, good, I'm done. There's my 320. So I, can, I can say done and I'll get those 320 results. And I can do that same draw shape in there. I could even do this true radius. Maybe, maybe I don't want this area for whatever reason. I can double click in there, exclude those, say okay. And then uh, however many are in this shape will get excluded from my 320. So again, it just depends on what I need to be able to do. Here are my boundary selects. It always starts with the state boundary itself. Could be area codes, metro areas, counties, zip, city, just depends. Let's overlay the zips. So there are the zip codes in my area. And if I wanted to expand that, by the way, I just I just uh, use that navigation and, and select that minus sign in it and it expands my, my view. So then it's just a matter of clicking in whichever of these zip codes I'm interested in seeing. So I've got 15 results in there. 44 results in there, you get the idea, you get to drive, you get to select whatever makes the most sense to you. And again, if that's what you want, you say done and bingo, uh, that's it. Perhaps, how far, I'm going to delete these guys, how far away, and I'm gonna to return to my tools, how far away, is, oops, I'll back out a little bit more. Where in the world? Okay. Let's go to San Jose to Stockton. I'm going to do my drive route. 
and I'm going to say San Jose CA to my buffer distance i'm going to say to the system notice that the maximum i can go is 15 i'm going to say 0.3 that would be three blocks on either side of the roadway that my route will take me so i'm going to create that buffered route bingo it looks like an earthworm and there are 80 businesses that match my criteria from Stockton all the way down to San Jose. So you get the idea how you could use that drive route. And then if that's all you need, bingo, I say done. There's my 80 results based on that criteria that I asked the system to use. And I have that available to me. Let's look at Chipotle. I wonder. Okay. So they have quite a few branches, but no other, no, no subs at all. It just goes directly to their parent company. So you can get to any of that kind of data. Questions? I don't see any question in the chat. If anyone has question, please type it in in the chat. Well, while you're considering your question, I do want to point out, notice that it says that three of these 80 have email addresses and more information. What it will do is it'll direct you to contact us. We sell that information. We don't put those email addresses out there. You can imagine that if all the people that have access to the database through all the libraries across the United States had access to those email addresses as, as well, how quickly those would sour. So that is something that we do sell. In fact, this 80 isn't really... Uh, and the number of three isn't really exact. We probably have 65% coverage of that 80. That's a good rule of thumb in terms of our coverage. Bill, we, we have a question. Uh, from Excellent. Wen. Yeah. Um, the question is, is it possible to look up residential real estate holdings by investment consortia? As consortia? Uh, for example, if I want to know who has bought up the houses in a neighborhood and turned them into expensive rentals, would this database give me the information? It would not. What we care about is who resides at that address. Our our database is always going to be first and foremost focused on marketing. So it's being able to get businesses in front of either businesses or people at a particular address. But great, great question. I'm not quite certain where you would get that kind of insight unless it were perhaps through a uh, local government entity. I'm not aware of any database that would provide that kind of, of insight. Not to say that there isn't something out there. I'm j I've just never heard of that. Great question though. And another question uh, from Chris um, is wondering when performing a search, choosing special selects and then professional all in one, if you choose the one option in an office of many uh, doctors or lawyers, for example, how does the search decide on a single person? So the search uh, decides on that single entity, that person, based on the information we have about Jones and Sons, right? So we're going to provide you that insight based on what we learned in our verification phone call. Great question. 
So even though Mr. Jones, you know, and this could be possible, uh, even though J Mr. Jones started the company, it may have already gone over to the to the sons, but it could be in between those those uh, verification phone calls that that happened, and we may not w be aware of that. So know that in some cases you might end up speaking with someone else at that entity, but we that's what we attempt to get in our verification phone call. So that would be doctors' offices. Uh, could be under Smith and Smith and uh, Samson, right? So we're going to give you that one name based on that primary as we know it through that phone call. Excellent question, Chris. Other questions? I don't see other question in the checkbox now. Okay, let's, speaking of consumers, let's do this. I'm going to, well, I do want to show you real quickly Obviously, you've seen the records as it relates to the business database. Let's take a peek at the records and the amount of information that's that's available in the new business filings. Not nearly as robust as what you see here because these are simply filings, right? So I can open up the database. Again, I can go directly to advanced search. And I could ask the system, uh, you know, show me those businesses that uh, were filed. And as, as you'll note here, it always defaults to the last six months. It could be as recent as last week or within the last year. Let's look in the last three months. And let's, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to pull up. Let's do that zip code again. Lori, what was that? It was nine nine four one oh two. One oh two. We'll do that. Give me another zip code that might be right down there in downtown. Oh, um, let me think. Oh, nine four one oh three, Doreen said. I was gonna guess <laughs> oh three, and I bet oh four is somewhere down there as well. Uh I'll do that one as well. We'll do those three. So we'll say, show me businesses that have filed in these three zip codes in the last three months. I have 266 filings. Now, if I wanted to filter these filings a little bit more, I could do it based on location type or and or, I'll open up both of these. So I could do it by location type, home-based or corporate location, maybe doing business as. So let's do that. How many of these apply now? 71. Bingo, I've got those 71. And there they are. So in these filings, we didn't even get an address. Notice that's missing from that file. Let's look at this LW Supply Company. So I've got that location information. And it notes that it's a new location doing business as and that they have three employees. They did not choose to fill in this information. So again, we'll try and capture that when we reach out to this business. And we may find in our phone call that they don't plan on opening anytime too soon. We're not going to create a record until we're able to verify them as open. So that information is available and I can frame this, you know, I could, I could, maybe I want to know about these, these 71 records and the type of businesses they are. I could chart this again and it'll give me that SIC code breakdown again in the last three months. And there they are, general merch, uh, merchandise, restaurants, real estate, tree services, et cetera. Notice I have the ability to change that a little bit, a little bit in terms of do I want to go two months or within the last month. Again, all of that is available. I can always put this information on my heat map as well and get a sense of where that is. And since there are fewer than 300 records, it's going to give me that pinpoint information. So that is always available to you.
in most of our modules. The only one that's slightly different uh, or the only two would be the jobs and internships and the US healthcare. Otherwise, this heat map is available in all of the modules, as is the charts. So you can utilize, if, if, if knowing about new businesses or new filings for businesses is important to you, you can always utilize this information. And by the way, I not only have it for new businesses, but of course, new homeowners and, and those people that have moved to the community. So if that kind of insight's important, you could always open that module up. Again, it's gonna to come to that quick search page, but now you can get into advanced search and use additional filters to include or exclude uh, the folks that you're going to uh, get in terms of their records. So a lot of people like to use this feature, the move distance and time frame. Maybe I don't want to know about people who've moved across town or who've come from Oakland, but I'd like to extend that range. So you can tell the system, you know what? I don't want to see anybody that's moved from within miles of my community. So I truly want those newer people to my community who wouldn't know about my business. And I can say, let's say 2,600 miles. And again, you've got this time frame. It defaults to that six months as recent as last week or within the last year. Let's, let's look in the last six months. And we'll just do the city again. You can see I've been in the city before because it populates there. I'll say go. And I have a total in the last six months of nearly 3,000 people. Imagine if I went out to the full one year, what would I have? 6,200. How about within the last week? 129. Let's see, of this group of 100, let's imagine that I sell renter's insurance, or maybe I sell real estate. Wouldn't I love to know how many of these 129 are, in fact, renters? So there's an audience of 79 over the last week that have moved into uh, San Francisco, and I could be I could be using those zip codes again if I wanted to. It just depends on you know I could be doing a radius from a, a particular address, maybe my work address. It just depends on how I want to frame it. But I could get to that group of renters and notice, no matter what module you're in, when it comes to any of our consumer data, you'll always receive this cautionary message that would indicate that. Any kind of telephone numbers displayed, and by the way, I rarely see telephone numbers displayed uh, because we're getting this through the national change of address form that people are filling out, and rarely do people put a phone number on there. In some cases, you might see one, but rarely. But it does go on to state that any of the telephone numbers displayed may be on the do not call list and should not be used for phone solicitation. Ultimately, you're responsible for the compliance with all uh, federal, state, and, and local laws. With that said, we do clean lists, whether it's your list or our information. Let's say that you wanted new movers that are renters in a particular area uh, that have moved there within the last several months. We can give you a clean list that you could, in fact, call if there were many phone numbers. That's the, that's the key, right? Uh, I can get this information. I can open up this information and I'm gonna get this address information. This person moved from quite a ways away, 2,566 miles away to come into your community. Then I've got some neighborhood information through the census. 
along with ages. And this is the only database module that will allow you to use an estimated age like that. So no, I can get to that kind of information. I can download this, I can send a mailer out. I have a cousin who lives in uh, Gainesville, Florida. And what he'll do is he'll do a radius around his business. And let's imagine for a moment that his business was near this address. We'll, we'll pretend this. You can open this up and you can say, show new movers within, and, and you can say one block to 150 miles out. So he uses this and he'll do this five. And let's see how many other new movers are within a five mile radius of this address here. He's got a carpet and tile cleaning service and he wants to reach out to these new movers to let them know about his service and try and earn or win some business, right? So then when you go into that view, wow, I've got a lot of them. Something seems, is Daly City uh, nearby? Yes. Okay, yes. that's why. South of San okay. Francisco. Okay, okay. So yeah, a lot of folks, and this is going to be over a different period of time. This is gonna show the entire year. It might even be beyond that. I'm gonna to have to double check on that. That just seems like too large of a number. Daily City would begin to sink in the ground if this were, if people were coming in at this rate in a year's time. Yeah. That's too much. I'm gonna have to find out if there's not a, an Ubu here. That just seems far too large. I'm gonna go back and I can always get back to my original record. Here's that original record I was on and get back to my list. So no, you can access information like that as well and use any of these filters that someone might, might want to use. There's that estimated age, estimated income. You can use that kind of insight in order to produce those results. And, and I don't remember if that was Chris's uh, question or whom had asked the question about the people buying up homes in a particular area. Notice this is always based on individuals that are gonna be residing well, as, as best we know it, are gonna be residing at an address. I'm gonna go back to my homepage because I also have consumer lifestyles data. This um, can be Phil, some, oh, Phil, can, yeah. can we ask a question? There are two questions. Um, Absolutely. Uh, they, they came in when you were um, demonstrating uh, the US new businesses uh, database. Uh, the first question is, um, how is it that some of those companies have a listing without an address? Um, and the second question is, can you also look up how many businesses have shut down in the last 12 months um, during COVID? You know, I can't do that in the new business filings, but I can do that in the in the U.S. business database by just looking at closed businesses. And that's as we can get that information. Realize that when we make our phone call, let's say we don't reach that business that first attempt, and we're calling Monday through Saturday, that's when those researchers work, and they work from 7 a.m. Central Standard Time to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, that Monday through Friday, and then a reduced hours on Saturday. So they're calling those businesses, but the process is we keep calling for two years, unless, of course, we see maybe from their website that they're closed, then we'll update that accordingly. But if we don't find any information about closure, we will continue to try and reach them for two years. So we keep them verified until we can't, until we've exhausted that period of time. And then we'll move them from that verified status into unverified. They well may be closed. We just haven't learned about that. 
So uh, let's go back to that first question about the new businesses. It was, the, the question was, uh, why am I not seeing addresses with all those new business uh, filings? That's exactly what I'd like to know because we got that filing through the Secretary of State's office, but that business chose not to put an address in there. We copy exactly what we get. If there's no address, bingo, we don't have an address. And that's something that we try and obtain when we make a verification phone call. In some cases, we don't even get phone numbers. So then we're left trying to search online for phone numbers about a business, right? And then uh, get that information verified. It's possible that a new business filing we never reach. We never move that from that status other than moving it out after a year. So you'll see that perhaps as an unverified business. And it may not be a complete address because again, we didn't get that in our in our in our in our filing. Great questions. Other questions. I have a question. Um, how often uh, the database is updated? So uh, remember at the outset, I mentioned that the U.S. Business Database. We're pushing any new data that we get about about businesses. We're pushing that new information out every Thursday into Friday morning. So 52 times a year, this is being updated with new information, right? Whereas the U.S. Historical is technically at the beginning of every year. And the new business, that's also weekly. That's why it gives you that ability to look at it from as recent as last week, all the way up to within the last year. Thank you. You bet. The consumers, uh, this is the only consumer module that's updated weekly. The US consumers, the standard white pages, the US healthcare, and the uh, Canadian businesses, those are all updated monthly. Whereas the jobs and internships, this information can be updated multiple times in a day. Just depends on what's happening within any given uh, community, within any given area. I've seen where I've gone in and done the same search in the morning and came back and did the same search in the afternoon and there were more records added. So it just depends. Let's do this, consumer lifestyles. This is a, uh, a terrific database. I helped a lady uh, do a search just recently. She, was, she owns a dog uh, boarding kennel and she was interested in finding because you've heard it on the news, whether it's your local news or the national news, you know, some of the morning hosts have have uh, their dogs present with them, especially when everybody was working from home and they had their, their four-legged friends with them uh, during their production piece. We know that a lot of people have uh, purchased pets in this last year or so. And so this lady has a boarding kennel and she knows that people are starting to go back to work going on vacation where we hear on the news about the fact that airports are getting busier and busier nowadays. The, she expects to see an increase and she wanted to be able to identify those people in her immediate area. And it was based on a radius. She wanted to be able to identify those dog lovers. So with that said, I would go right to advanced search like most of the databases. We're getting this consumer and, and lifestyle data from a variety of sources, surveys that people have completed, warranty card submissions that they've sent in. Uh, you know, maybe I have, maybe I bought a, uh, one of those uh, dog bark collars and I sent in the warranty on that collar because it gave a, 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 a one year parts and labor or what, however they frame that. I sent that in along with my address information, et cetera. So we're capturing that from those kinds of sources, membership subscriptions, people have joined. 
I wasn't in the database as a dog lover when I first moved back into Omaha. I started buying my dog food at Petco and was soon identified under lifestyles as a dog lover. So here are my pets and animals. And you can drive in just those that are dog lovers in any given area. And there is a scoring system that works in the, in the background. It's zero through nine, but we will only show you people who score a six or higher. So anybody that's a five would not show up in a search for dog lovers. Let's just do the city of San Francisco again. I'll say go, I'll select those results. So instead of showing all per household, I would switch it to one per household, one, one name, one address, right? I have a total across San Francisco of those dog lovers to the tune of 2,100 that score in that six or higher range. If I wanted that universe, I can get to just that group. She wanted to be able to do a radius around her physical uh, location where her our boarding kennel is in order to be able to do that. But we'll just look at the entire community here. And again, it's always gonna give you that same message about the telephone numbers that may be displayed. And I often get this question, Bill, how many of these are cell phone numbers? have no idea. We're not asking for that kind of insight. So if somebody filled out a warranty card and they put their cell number down versus a landline, or if they even have a land landline, we don't know the difference. We just know it's a phone number for that person. So here's that here's what that information is going to look like. It's going to give you that name information. Now, everything that we've seen is that she's single, been in this home for a number of years. We have some neighborhood information along with those lifestyle indicators. Now, the only thing we asked about were dog lovers, not, not, not gerbils or goldfish or hamsters, just dog lovers. We could do another search for, say, like general cooking, and this record may not come up because she's not active enough in that category. In fact, uh, a, a, a library that I used to cover the state of Florida and a library uh, staff member that I'd known for a number of years, she called me up one day and she was looking at this lifestyle's interest on her mother-in-law's record and she said, Bill, there's a problem with, with my mother-in-law's record as it relates to this technology and entertainment. She said, I can tell you that she is not at all interested in electronics. So that's an error. And, and she shared a few other insights with me. And I, I said, well, Elizabeth, one moment, please. Uh, so you're telling me that your mother-in-law has never bought any electronic games or any kind of products for any of your three children, or for that matter, any of her other grandchildren. Is that what you're telling me? And she said, I understand. Just because you see this doesn't mean that they're active in that category. It's just, it simply means that they had have had some interest at one point in time in that category. But that record wouldn't show up if we were doing a search for those particular products because they're not active enough. So that's how that is always going to work. And notice this, let's, let's go back to the, I'll revise the search slightly. And we're going to notice this other section that's called consumer snapshot. And it goes from uh, here with age all the way down to veteran present. Let's grab a few of these and we'll grab some age ranges here. And we'll say married with children present. What is that gonna do to my total now that I added some of these additional filters? 
So now I have 69 records at that point. I can view those results and get to that, uh, that level if I need to. So know that that's always available as well. Just depends on what you need. And of course the download works the same, the uh, print function and the save search. Any questions regarding the consumer lifestyles? Dave? Yes. Yes. Yes, there is a question. Um, so many websites and companies say they won't share our personal information, such as the fact that we have a companion animal. So how do you get this information? Is it by definition limited to only companies that are willing to share the customer information? Or do you have another exactly. way of getting that information? No, nope. all about those company relationships. Yes, correct. Like I mentioned, I was not in the database when I first moved back into Omaha, but it was my activity through Petco and specifically my PALS membership that identified me as such. Thank you. You betcha. Other questions? Uh, I don't see another question right now in the chat. Any questions on any of these other modules? We're about six minutes before we conclude. I'd like to give it enough time that we can answer any last minute kinds of what ifs or questions. Oh, uh, someone asked for a link to the database. Uh, let me send it again. Um, and that access is always going to be obtained by going through the San Francisco Public Library. But you have that like, nice little uh, uh, example that you shared at the beginning, correct? Uh, yes, but uh, in my introductory slide, I didn't actually include how to get to the database. Oh, gotcha. um, yeah, so so Jenny, if you click on the link that I just put, um, it, it lists all the database that start with the letter R. So you scroll down and you will find a reference solution. Um, so you click on that link and you will need to type in your library card number and PIN and, and you will have access um, to the database. Um, so there's a question from when, um, if I want to see what information about me is included in the database, what kind of search would I do? Just uh, name and uh, name and city state would get you there. So, so he would go into uh, consumer, the consumer database yes. and look yes. for his uh, yep. uh, name. So you could do just the name search and then that city state. And that should produce a record for you. If it doesn't, that means that we just don't have your information there. Thank you. Other questions? I don't see um, another question in the chat. Um, but thank you very much, Bill, uh, for your wonderful um, demonstration. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining the program. I hope you all find the demonstration and the reference solution database um, useful um, to you. Um, we will be sending out um, the evaluation survey together with a link to the recording uh, later um, this afternoon. Uh, please give us your feedback so we can continue to improve. Um, again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bill. And have a Absolutely. wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye.